is Fenrir the most power creeped operator that Siege has ever seen? Today, I want to explore Fenrir's impact on the highest level of competitive Rainbow Six Siege. I'm going to look into the usefulness of his kit, which operators he replaces in defensive lineups, and where he fits into the current meta. Unfortunately, there have been no tier 1 games played since Fenrir's release, so I can't show you any pro uses of Fenrir yet, but I'm going to predict as best I can. What is Power Creep? Power Creep in gaming is defined as the process in multiplayer games in which newly added content, such as character abilities or equipment, can be played alongside old content, but the new content is far more powerful slash useful. This process makes old content no longer worth using. That's the definition, so let me show you why I think Fenrir fits into this category. Looking at his kit and his gadget, Fenrir fits under the Trap Operator umbrella. He has five FNAP mines in which he can activate any three at a time. When activated, the mines cover a decent proximity and when an attacker steps into this proximity, the mine will detonate and completely obscure the vision of the attacker. The effect has no time limit and will stay active until the attacker leaves the area of effect or shoots the mine. Trap operators work by impeding the victim in some way, and each trap in Siege is unique. Legion Goo Mines will stop your ability to sprint, Ella Grismot Mines will stop your ability to hear and slightly distort your vision, Malusi Banshees slow you down, Thorn Razor Bloom Mines will damage you if in close proximity when it detonates, Capcan EDDs will damage you, and Frost Mats will injure you. But Fenrir's trap is different. It directly affects your ability to take a gunfight. You are almost completely blinded by the FNAP mines, meaning you have no chance of shooting back at your opponent. And in an FPS game, this is a big no-no. Yes, flashbangs also completely blind you, but there are risks involved in throwing a flashbang. The sound cue of the pulling of the pin, dropping your weapon to throw it, and exposing yourself to throw it. However, Fenrir's gadgets are set and forget, meaning you place them all down in prep phase, the gadget technically takes no risk to use, but you gain massive value from it. This is by far the best trap gadget in Siege, because it physically stops your opponent being able to shoot back. No other trap does this. Then with Fenrir, you also gain the passive value of information. If the gadget isn't being activated, then you know an attacker isn't in that area, and it is clear. And in Siege, information is power. Knowing an area is clear is sometimes the most valuable information that you can get. Fenrir has five FNATs, meaning technically he can cover five separate areas of the map with information. But I do understand only three of these areas can be active at any one time. However, that does mean he can adapt at any point in the round which FNATs are active to best counter what the attackers are doing. So a good Fenrir player will always gain value from his gadget. So Fenrir's primary gadget is the best trap in Siege. Let's look at what else his kit includes. He has a good SMG in the MP7, he has a Bailiff which means he can do all sight setups, and he has barbed wire or a bulletproof camera. He also is a 2 speed, 2 armor operator. In competitive Siege, operators are brought into lineups based on how valuable their entire kit is and how strong they can be in gunfights. Most operators in Siege have positives and negatives. Take Mute. His positives are a good primary and secondary gadget, jammers and a C4. He can also do sight setups, but his downsides are that he's weak in gunfights because of the SMG-11, and he's a 1-speed. Take Oryx. His positives are that he can do sight setups and has a good gun, but his downsides are his primary gadget of the dash actually isn't that useful compared to other primary gadgets. Then we look at Fenrir. He has no downsides. He can do everything. He has a good gun and he's a two speed, so he's strong in gunfights. He can do sight setup and his gadget is the best of its kind. And if we go back to the definition of power creep, Fenrir fits this perfectly. He is just objectively better than all other trap operator alternatives. And this is where I have a big issue. Ubisoft removed the three month competitive quarantine for newly released operators back in May 2022 because they believed, and I quote, our game design and balancing teams have done a tremendous job of solving the lion's share of balancing issues in the past years. But I'm saddened to say that this just simply isn't true with Fenrir. 
he currently is way too overpowered for competitive siege there is quite simply no downside to bringing Fenrir if you're not picking him you're trolling Fenrir's gadget allows him to be played in any way that you want off-site Roma check on-site anchor check fullback or time waster check he is so flexible that he quite literally counters all playstyles. Teams that are slow and methodical like Virtus Pro will take the extra time to drone out and clear the FNAP mines, but then this leaves them vulnerable to the clock because they're slowed down even more. Teams that like to be fast like FaZe will also be negatively affected because they won't take their time to drone out the FNAP mines as frequently and will walk into their doom. And that means Fenrir also perfectly counters the no drone run and gun ash mains out there and ranked at the minute. Fenrir can counter whatever style team you come up against and this makes him a scary scary prospect going into gamers 8. Want to ban Fenrir? That's nice. You're now leaving Azami, Solace and Valkyrie all available to be played against you. Fun. So if you do leave Fenrir unbanned what's the best way of playing against him? I think that we'll see a lot more Brava, Twitch and Flora's play on the flex pick players so that they can safely clear out the FNAP mines in their way with a drone. Alternatively, teams can just use their frag grenades on Yana, Sledge or Nock to clear any FNAP mines that stand in their path. The biggest winners of Fenrir affecting the meta are the unpredictable teams. Remember that Fenrir can only have three mines activated at any one time and that because he has five mines in total he can always adapt to the push that the attackers are going for. But if you don't know what push the attackers are going for, then you don't know which mines are best to activate. In my first video on this channel, I explained the unpredictableness of G2's attacks at the 6 Invitational. These types of unpredictable attacks are how I see teams best countering Fenrir. If a defender is occupied by an attacker elsewhere on the map because they're being pushed from multiple directions, then they may not be able to act on the detonation of an FNAP mine and an attacker can just walk in and shoot the mine without being punished. But don't mix up being unpredictable with also being lazy. The best unpredictable teams also do their due diligence to clear out any utility that stands in their path. Well that's seven minutes of me breaking down how and why Fenrir is so strong. I'd say he's on par with first release Ella. How would I nerf him though? Well, I actually do like his primary gadget of the FNAP mines because they're somewhat interactive. I'd actually keep his gadget the same, except changing that when you shoot the mine, the blinding effect immediately goes away because currently it doesn't. And change his do-it-all kit by removing the bailiff so he can't replace literally any operator in your lineup. It forces you to have to make an informed decision about which operator he replaces. But that's all the predicting out the way. I generally can't wait until Gamers 8 where we will see what the best teams can do with Fenrir. Yes, I am unhappy at how power creep Fenrir is upon release, but I do believe there are easy tweaks to him to make him more balanced. And in the long run, Fenrir is an exciting addition into competitive Rainbow Six Siege. But for the love of God, Ubisoft, please can we start releasing strong attackers and not just strong defenders? I am begging. Thank you for watching.